video on how to clean gasket surfaces. Many of you have posed the question to me, how do I clean them without ruining the actual mating surfaces, whether it be a head gasket, a front cover gasket, oil pan gasket, whatever. You need to get that old material off of there, whether it be remnants from the silicone gasket or actual silicone sealant. You need to get it off there and then do a final cleaning in the end. So I'm going to try to show you my method I've uh, kind of honed in over the years and what has worked for me. I'll probably disable comments in the description down below because I don't need no comments on this. Um, that's why I haven't done a video on this uh, as of yet because a lot of people are opinionated about this and all I can do is show you what I have used uh, in my many years of work at the dealership and have had zero comebacks or failures or oil leaks otherwise and we do see these vehicles back again and again and again for different issues oil changes whatever so we're going to know if there's a failure so I have a head gasket I'm going to show you how to clean today. I'm going to show you another example on the front cover, uh, how to clean that without getting too in depth, and then also how to clean aluminum cylinder heads, the actual uh, ceiling surface on there. And uh, it's a couple step process. So we're going to get started right now. I'm going to show you what I use, and then I'm going to show you a demonstration of how I use them. All right, now many of you have seen me posting pictures of this 5.4 liter head gasket job on Facebook. And I figured this is a perfect platform to go ahead and do this video on. I have a cast iron cylinder head block surface there. I have a front cover gasket area where it doesn't require as an intensive cleaning. And then I also have an aluminum cylinder head which you got to be kind of careful with as far as cleaning and be less aggressive. So I'm going to show you different methods for each one of these. Now what I use is these 3M roll lock bristle discs and they're the best option out there as far as removing gasket material quickly and safely. Now I do produce grit just like any other uh, abrasive so you need to be careful with the grit and where it goes but there is different grits as far as how aggressive they are. It goes from 50 grit green to 80 grit yellow to 120 grit white. Now what Ford recommends is to use the green on the actual cast iron surfaces and to use the white on aluminum surfaces. Now on cylinder head gasket surfaces what you need to realize is where the actual sealing surface is at. You need to look at it before you take off any material and look so you know where to concentrate. Around here on the actual compression ring okay you see it? That's the area you want to concentrate on but not be too aggressive because you don't want a big deep scratches in this area causing new compression loss issues. And also each one of these is a cooling passage. So you want to make sure around them is obviously clean so the little gasket material, the little blue material on the gasket can do its sealing around there. Also, what you need to realize is all this corrosion right here and stuff like that, you don't need to get rid of all this corrosion. You want to knock off some of it, but you don't need to sit there and grind into the head for half an hour getting all this corrosion off. This is not a ceiling surface. It's between the ceiling surfaces on the whole head gasket. So what I do is I usually get most of it off like this. I like it nice and shiny, but it can be just like this. See this right here? where there's some little bit, little bit left on there, that is just fine. That's not going to affect anything. What you want to concentrate on is around the actual ceiling surface here. And honestly, I haven't cleaned this whole area yet. You see the blue here yet and all that. I just started on this side. Now, over here, I did finish it. And it's fully finished. And you can kind of see it very important to get it clean just like this because you don't want to do head gaskets twice. Alright so the first thing you want to do is get rags down in the cylinders that are actually down on their stroke. So we keep as much grit out of there as possible. Like I said there's going to be grit with this procedure so you got to control where it goes and how much of it actually gets into the passages on the engine. Now I obviously can't plug each one of these coolant passages but we can definitely keep it out of the cylinder so we have less cleanup later on. So I make sure we got rags down in there and then if you have a sucker machine or 
turkey baster with a tube on the end of it, whatever you can do to get the coolant out of these passages, especially on the back part of the heads here where so these engines lean back. So these may be full to the top. You want to get that coolant out of there so that when you spin over it with your, your grinding disc, your cleaning disc, it doesn't just start kicking up all kinds of coolant out of there. You want to make sure that you, it's down as far as possible in these coolant passages and we're just cleaning a dry deck on here. So what I'm going to show you now is how to actually clean it using the roll lock disc and the methods I use to make sure it cleans it the best, the fastest, and without uh, any damage. Now on for the cleaning. Any surface that is not being cleaned, let's say the other side, the cylinder head area, the front cover area, anything you've got exposed, you want to make sure it's covered very well and that only the area that we're actually cleaning currently is exposed. And what I like to do first is, is uh, clean the actual surface with brake clean on a rag and we'll wipe it down and get any kind of coolant or oil residue off of there. Make sure it's as dry as possible and then we can start on it. Now eye protection is obviously a very, very good idea anytime you're working with any kind of power tools. And I like to use the white, even on the cast iron block surface here, especially on head gaskets. Head gaskets are ones you do not want to mess with. So I'm going to try to use this, the 120 grit, and make sure that I don't get too aggressive with this surface on here. And what you want to do is you want to touch it lightly. You don't want to grind into it. You want to touch it lightly and go high RPM. I'll try to show that now. And you'll see it takes a while for me to get that off of there. But this right here, this is super smooth right now. You can, it's so smooth and feels so clean and perfect. This is the best you're gonna get without actually taking this engine block or cylinder head down to the machine shop and having them do it. It's great, I love it, how it, how it finishes the surface so well on here. And it should look something like this. Remember, light pressure, high RPM. Now after the deck surface on here looks pretty good like it does, we used 120 grit so it almost like polishes it instead of actually gouging into it. I do an actual cleaning with brake clean on a rag and then we're going to do a final step on here as far as cleaning the surface and that is with actual scotch Brite pad on here and I get a full pad like this, we use the, the red stuff which is, is fine a fine grit on there and I go like this back and forth almost like an actual sanding pad and that makes sure that any kind of uh, uh, marring of the surface any of the swirl marks that you get from that rotary pad in there are uniform in there and it actually will clean it and uh, do an even finer finish on it. I like to go back and forth And this, of course, you can put some effort into. It's, it's so fine, you're not going to ruin anything. Actually, put some hand pressure into. And go back and forth, even uniform pressure. And in the end, we'll get a surface that looks so nice. After a little brake clean, I'll be happy with it. That's going to seal properly. up nice get a light grit out of there and then we can inspect our surface see if it passes
Now what you're going to want to use anytime you're cleaning a gasket surface is a lint-free rag. Now of course the dealer is not supplying them with us and you may not be able to find them or not want to spend the money on them. So you just make sure you clean up after yourself any kind of lint that you may not be be left behind with the air hose or whatever else. So it may be hard to see on camera, but this surface is actually very smooth. And it's almost like new on here. I love it. Especially around these ceiling rings. No pitting, nothing. I think I've got the camera where I can actually see the surface on here. Like I said, see that pitting? Don't worry about it. It's not a ceiling surface. Everything else is. You can see how my pattern is nice and straight on here. Hopefully you can see it. You see that? How nice and polished that is? Especially right here around that ceiling ring. And this is how it should look in the end. Finished product. Cleaned, scotch brighted, cleaned again. I have very high confidence in this ceiling surface. Now the one other thing you want to do on cylinder head gaskets is make sure, obviously when you're cleaning the deck surface with your brake clean on the rag, is get the cylinder walls very well with that and keep doing it until that rag comes out clean. It's not full of black uh, pieces of metal in there, you know, the actual fine grit. And then also, one last thing, you got all this done, right? Oil on a rag, wipe the cylinder walls with oil so they have oil upon startup. That's just one other extra tip for cylinder head gaskets uh, so they're not starting up dry in here. And then after you do that, you're liable to get a little bit around the edge. So one last cleaning with your rag and brake clean across the head surface here and you're ready to go. Now as far as front covers it gets a little bit trickier as far as covering the areas you're not working on because this whole cavity is going to be exposed either way. Now the actual ceiling surface on these is usually not too bad as far as usually it's just staining stuff like that whereas down below here let's see if we can get you in here there we go where it actually comes to the point where the block meets the pan in the front cover there's usually sealant right here so you take a razor blade and you get it off of there okay and you get that out of there and then the front covers I don't use the wizard wheel it puts too much debris out there and even though all this is covered it's going to get all up in this area and it's going to be a big mess and that grit is not good for your engine so what I use on here is cover everything up and then I use the actual scotch bright pad and it'll polish that surface and get that staining off of there let's see if we can do it and it won't kick up a bunch of garbage and as you can see it does a fine job of that pretty quick too now the same thing in the valve cover gasket area here of the head you want to cover all the the internal engine components like the cam and the and the roller lifters and the um, roller followers in there to keep all the contaminants out of here. And I don't use a wizard wheel. You just have a little bit of uh, varnish on here from the engine over the years. And I use a scotch bread. You see how it takes it off pretty easy. And you could even go away. If you're really that concerned. But it doesn't take much effort, so I do not use a wizard wheel here. And the same thing with the front of the head here. Get that sealant off of there. Like that. And then I use the scotch brake. You can see it doesn't take that much effort, and you won't get any contaminants in the oily front engine area here then. Just gotta watch it. Now as far as aluminum heads, these usually are not too bad to get off as far as all this material in here. You don't have to deal with the corrosion like you do on the cast iron cylinder block, but you do have to be extra careful because it is a softer material. 
And I don't know if I mentioned before or not, but when you're doing this, same thing, light pressure, high RPM, but you gotta keep moving. Don't wanna sit there and like that, you wanna keep moving. If you have a trouble spot, just keep moving over it. Don't just sit there and go on it. So that's one point I can give you on these. I'll show you how these are actually a lot easier to clean off. Same thing, use the white uh, bristle brush on here. And you can see how it comes off on there really easy. So that's even more important on these ones. Don't even try to put any kind of pressure on it. It's kind of float the disc over it. And the same thing for final cleaning on here, final polishing, use the scotch Bright pad. Nice, even, firm pressure. And there it is. One thing I didn't mention is it's best, if you can, pull the cam off and all that so you can have these valves all the way closed. We don't get like grit down. You see all this grit right here? We're going to blow all this out and clean this off very well. Now some guys like to do this where the cylinder head's standing up and all the debris will kind of fall off. Um, either way, if you're going back and forth, it's going to get caught in here either way. So you might as well just do a really good cleaning in the end and not worry about it. And that way it's not flopping all over the place on you. Looks like new.